Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at my new 080. Okay, you caught me. It's the wrong engine. This is my 100 Lionel Lines engine. But I've already taken the Union Pacific engine almost completely apart. So really, it'd be difficult to hold it up. I figured before I committed to taking it apart, I'd try it on the track a couple times and kind of smack it around and see if anything worked. And really, nothing happened. I removed and applied power a few times, and then the engine sort of shuffled forward about a quarter inch, uh, and it became clear that the motor was trying to turn, but it really just wouldn't do it. At that point, I kind of had a feeling that the E unit was okay, but really couldn't be sure because there could be many reasons why that motor wouldn't turn. Since there wasn't a clear-cut solution at that point, I decided it was time to start disassembling the engine. I did not completely disassemble it, but it is in a few pieces right now. One of the things that helps when diagnosing something like this is eliminating any part you can to verify that that part isn't the problem. I might be forgetting a step or two, but essentially what I did was I removed the motor and the E-unit board and then powered the E-unit board directly, bypassing the pickups and the wiring in the engine itself. When I did that, I had the same result. The motor sort of wanted to turn, but then really didn't. I figured I'd take a closer look at the wiring and see if I could see anything that might be causing an issue. I thought maybe the wires connected to the motor were an issue, and while I was moving it around, one of the wires did fall off. Uh, so I resoldered the wires, checked them out, and tried it again by powering the E-unit. Same result. So at that point, I decided that I needed to try to power the motor directly. So what I did was desolder the motor from the board and applied some variable DC power right to it. And still, same result. It really seemed like there was something damaged inside the motor. I took the motor and I blew it out with some electronics cleaner and a lot of debris came out and then it seemed like the motor didn't want to turn at all, like there was something physically blocking it from turning. So I shook it around, I tried to spin it until eventually it would spin freely. I let it dry because you don't want to power something while it still has any residue of the electronics cleaner in there, even though it does emit a really pretty blue flame. It's not something you really want to do. So I let it dry, and then I tried to power it again directly with variable DC. Same result, the motor wasn't working. So I figured it was probably a decent guess that the motor itself was broken. I went online, did a quick search. I found the motor on eBay for about $30 plus shipping, and that was a little bit more than I felt like spending on an engine I bought for $25. Uh, so I kept looking around, and it occurred to me I should probably check the Lionel website. So I did, and I found the same motor for an 080 available for $18. Of course there's shipping, but still between the part and the shipping it costs less than the motor on eBay. And I figured there was a better chance that the motor from Lionel would be good. Maybe I'm wrong, but I figured that would be a good shot. That motor is currently on order and hopefully will be here tomorrow. Of course, this video will have already come out, so that won't affect this video at all. But let me show you what I've done so far. All right, my workbench is kind of a mess, and I did some of this work inside and some of it out here, so I've probably mixed up some of the screws. And it really looks like a lot of the screws are slightly different, so it's gonna be fun putting it back together. You got your basic puffing smoke unit. Uh, it's got a switch, so that's good. And you got the unit here got a wire for this might be the power in uh, then we've got this switch here which is the reverse lockout this one goes to the front lamp this one the rear lamp which this engine does not have and this goes to the motor since we do have a connection here I'm gonna see if I can set up a rear light but now that I'm looking at it I don't have a connector to fit in there uh, I do have a connector to fit this one, but not this one. So I might have to look for some more parts so that I can run a rear light. A couple of things I was thinking about since I have the engine all torn apart 
is could I add a firebox glow and a cab light? And I'm wondering, maybe I just power that right off this wire before it even gets to the board. But that's kind of secondary to actually getting the engine working. I took the engine apart to this point. There are a whole lot of screws on the bottom you don't need to mess with unless you want to open up this whole section and service whatever is inside, axles and gears. Uh, I've never had one of these open beyond this point, so I don't really know what's in there or what's involved. Um, again, if I can get the motor working, then I might be inclined to take this all apart. But for the time being, this is as far as I'm going. We also have the shell and the base. Shell's metal, base is plastic. Here we have the boiler front. I uh, made a ill-advised decision to try to remove the Union Pacific decal. And as you can see, it just took all the paint right off. Bunch of little pieces, front coupler, front steps, a rubber band from an Amazon box that's a pretty good size for a traction tire. I have actually used one of those as a traction tire before. Let's see, anything else in the box? I've got this little insulator piece. Don't really know what it is or if it even belongs to this, but since I found it on the counter near it, I'm going to hold on to it. And then this is the motor in question. Right now it spins freely, but hitting it with any sort of DC voltage, it doesn't do anything. You can feel it kind of want to turn, but it doesn't. And you can spin it and it might do like a quarter turn or a half turn, but that's it. So I figure if the motor was any good at all, and I hit it with variable DC, it should spin. You might be able to see why I considered the wires being an issue. That is not much of a connection there. Oh, and now it just broke off. Uh, <laughs> this one is the one I had resoldered already. At this point, I don't care that that broke off because I've got a new motor coming and it should be here tomorrow. Interesting, I thought, was that the connector on the motor and this random connector that I use for internal lighting and stuff like that happens to be the same thing. So I think that's pretty cool. So that enabled me to just plug in the connector and use it as an easy way to test the motor. They had a lot of different versions of the 080 uh, from basic starter set up to more feature rich versions. Uh, I assume there's probably a legacy version. I don't know if it's the same casting or not. Uh, but what they do have is a hole right here. Since there's a hole right there, I think I'm putting in a cab light. I considered firebox glow, and there are no holes down here. I mean, I could get the light to just shine out the bottom and kind of flicker on the track below, or I could attempt to drill a couple holes so that you can see the light come through. I'm not sure that I really want to start drilling through the casting, but I don't know. I guess it will depend how, uh, how brave I feel at the time. I was just thinking that maybe I could grab the front light off this other engine and use that, but the connector for the front light is bigger than the connector for the rear light. Something else I just thought of, uh, I don't have pins for this and they are very small, but if I wanted to sacrifice the light from the other unit and I could remove the pins from the connector, I might be able to use those two pins to plug into here and feed marker lights on this one. I think really I would probably just look for another donor engine or I don't know, a box of parts somewhere other than, you know, instead of taking this engine apart. Because even though this is a pretty basic version, uh, it works. It was 60 bucks, I bought it a while back, and this thing runs fantastically. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted this UP version is if you look at all the side rods, there's just a lot more detail on the UP version. And that's really what uh, made me want to buy it. And I figured worst case scenario, I'd swap some parts over and get one engine with a little more detail. But if I could end up with two and double head them, I think that would be really cool. This might look very complicated if you're used to just working on post-war engines. And yes, there's a little more to it, but really it's not that much different. Whenever you're looking at something like this to figure out how it comes apart, just take a look at all the different screws. If you want to take the shell off, look at the side. We've got this big space in here, right? 
So obviously none of these screws attach the bottom to the boiler. So we're looking at the front and the back for screws. You got two screws on either side of a switch, so that's screws for the switch. You're not going to want to touch those. We've got screws here and here and also down here and over here. If we look at the other casting, you can see that these screws are still in place. While I was looking at it, I figured these screws are easier to get to than the ones down here, so I'm going to take these two out. So I did that, and then I just kind of moved the thing around a bit for like a pivot point. And I figured there was probably a screw somewhere in here, in this center section, holding the pieces together. I take these two screws out, and remove that, and you're left with, in this version, this screw holding it, this on, but I figured that's not it. So I took this screw out. Okay, so that screw comes out, and then this slides off these two posts here. And the screw that goes through here goes into this piece right here. And this piece is this part right here on the plastic part of the frame. There are also a couple more screws right here and right here, and those attach to the casting. So once you have that one screw out for the coupler and these two screws out, parts should separate. The only difficulty I had after that was getting this plastic post to release from the base. And what I did was I just kind of pushed it with a screwdriver while holding the whole thing. I just, I applied pressure and then after a moment of like kind of wiggling and pressing, it popped through and then the pieces separated. And once you have the boiler off and that plastic plate off, you really have access to whatever it is you need, whether it's the smoke unit, the board, or the motor. So yeah, there are a couple more screws and maybe a few more steps, but getting it apart to get in there and clean it and service it isn't that much more complicated than an older engine. So while some of these might seem a lot more complicated, the same idea applies. Look for the screws that would make sense. Take them out. If you don't want to take them all the way out, unscrew them at like what feels like halfway and then see if you've got play. So if I removed these two and then tried to wiggle the base, it wouldn't have done anything. So that's just kind of how I go. I look for screws that look like they make sense, loosen them, and then see if there's any play in the parts that I'm trying to get apart. And whenever I work on a new engine, that's just how I do it. Also, just take your time, be patient, and if you need to, take some pictures along the way so that you have something to reference when you're putting it back together. And let me tell you, I probably should have taken a couple more pictures. So what happens now? I'm waiting for the motor. I'll get that motor. I'll test it with straight variable DC. Then I'll attach it to the board, test that. And if all's good, I'll put it all back together. And if it runs well, I'll then consider putting in the cap light and or firebox glow or trying to figure out how to add a backup light or marker lights or something like that. But for now, I think I'm in a good spot I'm pretty confident this will work. Now I just need to wait for the motor. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.